Today in this session, we're going to be looking at keeping faithful in studying the Bible uh, and look at some of the things that I believe uh, will enable us to continue to be faithful in our study. Before we begin, though, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you gave us to handle your word and to look into it. Thank you for the precious uh, source that you've given to us to encourage us, to help us, and to cause us to, to uh, grow in the things that are profitable in regard to our ministry, in regard to our life in service to you. Pray that you might take and bless our time together. Pray that these thoughts might be useful and might be practical before we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Why is it that some people say that they don't study the Bible? The first thing you probably will hear is, I don't know how. You and uh, you may be, uh, as I am right now, laughing to yourself because you probably have heard it, and maybe you have practiced that uh, that saying. I don't know how, uh, but uh, uh, it's pretty basic. As we did in the first session, all we need to do is be individuals who hear, individuals who read, and individuals who study, and uh, and uh, that is pretty basic. But uh, it's a good excuse anyway. At least uh, uh, most people like to use it. I don't know how. Then the second reason why people don't say the Bible is uh, not motivated. Now, sometimes it's very difficult to be motivated. It's difficult to do things that you constantly are doing over and over again. Uh, for example, uh, one of the things I have difficulty with being motivated about is, uh, for example, uh, taking and keeping my car clean on the outside or inside, but for a matter of fact, not, not motivated. Why? Because it doesn't make it run any better. Okay. But anyway, uh, sometimes we don't say the Bible because we're just not motivated. And then the third thing we find is that we may be just lazy. I find a lot of things that, that that's more, more practical, more, more useful than maybe studying the scripture. We, we are very busy people. Uh, our jobs, our families, uh, activities of all kinds can occupy much of our time and keep us from studying the scriptures. Now, it's, it's, uh, it's not necessary that we are lazy individuals but we may be lazy when it comes to studying the scripture or looking into the word of God. In other words, it's not a priority in our life. So those are, these are the three basic reasons I believe that Christians don't study the Bible. First of all, they don't know how, or at least that's an excuse, not motivated. And thirdly, they are just plain lazy when it comes to studying the word of God. What? Well, then the next question we might ask ourselves, what is the purpose of studying the Bible? What is the purpose of, the, of Bible study? The first purpose I believe that we find in Scripture and basically uh, practical to our lives and, uh, is the fact that we need to have spiritual maturity. We need to be mature. It's a very humbling thing when someone says, uh, you're not very mature, are you? <laughs> well, sometimes we are not very mature when it comes to, to the Word of God. And so we need to study the Word of God that we might be spiritually mature. You'll notice that we're looking at Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. I don't know who you, you may believe that wrote the book of Hebrews, but, but I'll, I'll go to heaven believing that Paul wrote it. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to say that right now as we begin reading that Paul writes, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. We said in the first session, the first thing we need to do is to hear. And then last week we said we not need to listen, but we really need to hear. And we need to let it sink deep into our, our ears and into our minds. 
And so Paul here says, dull of hearing. In other words, don't really hear with any real purpose or motivation. Verse 12, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, in other words, by, by age or spiritual, spiritual uh, uh, length of time saved, we ought to be teachers. He says, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And as become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Verse 13. For every one that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Verse 14. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to, to discern both good and evil. In other words, it does not necessarily mean, based upon one's age, that one is spiritually mature. Nor does it mean, based upon age, that, uh, that one uh, is mature in physical sense as well as in spiritual. And so our whole purpose of studying the Word of God is that we might become spiritually uh, mature, that we might have maturity in our life, and then the second purpose, I believe, for us studying the Word of God is that we might have spiritual effectiveness. And I again turn to the book of 2 Timothy chapter uh, 3, and verses 16 and 17. These are very familiar passages of Scripture, and yet I believe they teach us the importance of studying the Word of God. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. If we were to examine our lives and say, what is it that I would like to be stand before the Lord and be effective in. I believe that this is a list that we would all admit is something that we would like to have the Lord say, yes, you've been effective in doctrine, in reproof, in correction, and in instruction of righteousness. Well, that's the purpose of studying the Word of God. First of all, spiritual maturity. And secondly, spiritual effectiveness. Now, let us look at the keys to the door of understanding the Scriptures. If we're going to be hearing, we're going to be reading and studying and memorizing the Word of God, we need some keys uh, that will be beneficial to us, so to speak, to put our hat on. We need things in which we can, we can hold on to. And uh, this, I believe, are two keys that I use consistently in my study of the Word of God. The first keys uh, uh, or terms uh, that we use is words. And the second one is phrases. If I'm studying a particular book of the Bible and I'm going verse by verse, I first of all break that passage down into paragraphs and then I look at what I believe to be or what the Holy Spirit reveals to me to be key words so that I have something to hang my hat on and know what's going on in that passage of Scripture. And the second key that it, to enable me to remember what's going on in that passage of Scripture, not only just to hang my hat on, is a phrase that will automatically cause me to be reminded of what's going on in that passage of Scripture. And so every place I go in, in Scripture, I'm always looking at words, repeated words, or words that convey what is going on in the passage of Scripture, and something in which I can, I can easily put into my mind by a key phrase, so that I don't have to memorize a whole list of uh, passages of Scripture. And so if you use these two keys, uh, or these, t uh, these key terms, you're going to be able to, to look at the Scripture, and you're going to find your, your study becoming more effective 
and, and more of a blessing as you say the scripture. And then if you want to advance a little further, the second key is a, uh, that we see here is the key verse or verses. Now, if you want to memorize scripture, you'll find that there are key verses that you, you want to memorize as you're studying. It may be a verse, it may be a, a key verse. Now, later on in our studies, I'll show you a chart I use. In this chart, I, I, I list the references that I believe is in the paragraph, the content which I, I give the name of that passage of scripture, uh, the key verse or verses of that passage, key word or words that are in that passage, and a key phrase, or maybe more than one key phrase, but very short passage uh, sec sections of that passage of scripture that I use consistently as I study the word of God. I find it very practical and I find it very useful as I study the scriptures. Now the next section we like to look at is the three stages of attitude toward Bible study. Attitude is something that's very, very important, but yet sometimes overlooked. And when you approach something with, it, with a, your attitude not correct, uh, you're automatically going to, uh, going to have issues. And um, I could give you a number of illustra personal illustrations, but I'm not going to at this time. Three stages of attitude toward Bible study. The first stage, this kind of dates me, I believe. The first stage is the castor oil stage. All right? Now, I don't know if yours, uh, you probably have a lot of gray on the top, or maybe not <coughs> any hair on top. Uh, it depends on your, your gender. But anyway, uh, if you're old enough, you probably have been experienced with uh, that uh, your mother in love came towards you with a bottle uh, and a spoon and uh, wanted you to take something that was just down to earth terrible. All right. So sometimes uh, we, we have to, 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 to toughen it, so to speak, and take same things that may not taste good because it's good for us. Well, that may be the case in regard to studying the scriptures. We find that something is very hard for us, something that we, we just uh, don't, don't want to do at, at this point in time. But we know it's good for us, and so we do it. And, uh, and uh, it may not be real enjoyable, but we, we do it anyway. Uh, now, uh, one of the issues I have in my physical life is I have a lot of sinus problems. Someone told me a number of years ago that if you take a couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and put it in, in a, a glass and then take a spoon and dip it in honey and put it in there according to, to taste and, and put hot water in it, that it would greatly reduce the severity of your headaches or even maybe keep you from having far less. I found that to be true unless you had COVID, and as a result, COVID, I have tremendous headaches now. But anyway, that's, that's my personal illustration. But uh, as I found that if I, I mixed the honey just right in, in my mixture, that it in hot water or warm, very warm water, it tasted good. But if I got it too strong, vinegar, or too strong honey, it, that it wasn't as tasteful either. And so when we look at scripture, we have to have to be determined that it's going to be good for us, and uh, we may find it that a little bit uh, is one way or the other. But uh, and so when we first start, we're prone to be in the vicinity of a castor oil stage, and then the third, uh, the second stage is the cereal stage. That's where we dress, study the scriptures. It may be dry. It may be uninteresting to us. But we study because we know it, it nourishes us. A number of years ago, well, well, at my age, that's a long time ago. But anyway, uh, I was uh, working in a nursing home and uh, came in at breakfast time. And there was a little old lady sitting at the table. 
And, uh, and that morning she was eating dry, uh, dry cereal. So I, I sat down and talked to her because, uh, you know, I enjoy talking, communicating with the lady. And uh, she commenced to take her spoon and uh, dip into sugar. And she put two tables, uh, tea, I believe she teaspoons of sugar on the cereal. And then she commences to eating that cereal. I said, aren't you going to put milk on your cereal? She says, no, I don't want any milk on my cereal. Well, when I eat cereal, I like milk on my cereal. I don't know about you. But uh, sometimes we look at our study like cereal, dry cereal. And sometimes we maybe forget to put the milk on it. And uh, we put the sugar, you know, all tastes good, but it's awfully dry. But uh, uh, so we need, we need uh, to advance beyond the casserole stage and the cereal stage to what I like to say is the peaches and cream stage. Now, here in, we're in Indiana where we're making this video, uh, we have peaches if it's not too cold in the spring. Uh, but a lot of times it get froze out. But uh, there's nothing like, I believe, uh, and uh, this may make me some enemies, but anyway, there's nothing like a, a, a Georgia or, or uh, maybe even an Alabama peach that is really, truly ripe. We're talking about really, really ripe. One of those that, that when you peel, uh, peel it in two, you split it up and it, uh, the juice goes down your arms. One of those type peaches. Well, now I like the peach and cream stage where you get this fresh peaches and you just put a little bit of sugar because that's so sweet anyway. You put a little bit of sugar on it and a little milk or a little cream and uh, boy, talk about tasty. That is tasty. That's where you're studying the Word of God and you start to see that really uh, saying the Word of God is really not only just good for me, and it's not dry, and it's not uninteresting, but it's just exciting, uh, where we get excited in studying the Word of God, where we can say that we are now feasting on the Word of God. Well, that's the three a stages of attitude to Bible study. What, what stage are you in? What stage am I in? Uh, we're in one of those three stages. Now, the next thing we'd like to look at is what are some of the Bible study principles? A principle is something that, that is very practical, something that is very useful uh, in our life as we're studying the Word of God. The first thing we would like to look at is we need to ask questions. We need to ask questions. I don't know if you have a toddler around Maybe it's uh, your child or maybe a grandchild, depends on your age and development in life. One of the things that they, they're prone to do and prone to, 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 to uh, consistently do is to ask questions. And you may give them an answer which is completely uh, clear as could be, and they're still asked the same question over again. Well, we need to be, so to speak, as we approach the Word of God, we need to be uh, tolerers as well. There are six basic questions that we need to ask as we're studying the Word of God. The first one is who? In other words, who is talking or being talked to? Who? Not because we're an owl, but because we need to know something, all right? When we're studying the Word of God, we need to know what, uh, who has been talked to and uh, who, uh, who's doing the talking. Then the second question we need to ask is what? What is the subject or topic being discussed? And what comes before and what follows after? What? Very basic question, but a very important question. And then the third question is, where is the activity or discussion taking place? Where? For example, if we look at various passages, uh, uh, it's very important that we look at the where. Some passages are not necessarily important, but uh, a lot of passages are very important. Where is this activity or discussion taking place? And then the next question is, when? When is the activity or discussion taking place? And then the next one is why? 
this is when I think about a toddler, this is this is a question that they usually are asking. Why? 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 But anyway, why is the activity of discussion taking place? Or what is the purpose of this passage of Scripture? Or what is the purpose of what is being discussed here in this passage of Scripture? And then the last question is how? So these are six basic questions. Very practical. Do not always expect to find an answer. Don't make... I often say this, and it's very true, I believe. Don't, don't make something out of a passage of Scripture is not there. We have enough cults without us developing our own. So be very careful not to read into a passage of Scripture. So use these basic questions to help you in your study, but do not force the issue. Uh, if it doesn't tell you uh, that uh, how, uh, don't worry about it. Or if it doesn't tell you where it's taking place, don't worry about it. Just be interested in finding out everything you can. These are just six basic questions to help you uh, to discern what's going on in a passage of Scripture. And then the second thing I believe is so very, very vi vital, very, very important. And that is always have a pen and paper when you're studying the Word of God. In other words, write your, your observations. Now, one of the things that I, I strive to do whenever I'm de dealing with a passage of Scripture is outline the passage. Why? Because it helps me organize what the passage is saying and what's going on. Now, one of the things that I find that, that uh, I, I found very practical and very, very useful uh, in studying the Word of God, and that is write down anything that comes to your mind. Write it down, because it may cause you to, to jar your mind into an area that really concretes what's going on in the passage of Scripture. So always write down everything that comes into your mind. And if your mind is creative and as disturbed as mine, it will be very interesting. All right, so be sure to write down everything that you observe, every word that comes to your mind that causes you uh, that you're thinking as you look at a passage of Scripture. Now, the third thing that is very practical, or a very pr a good principle, is not only to write down your observations and to ask questions, but also to reflect on what you're reading. Or could say reflection. In other words, reconstruct the meaning of what's going on in the passage of Scripture. We're not going to spend a lot of time here because I think it's not as important as the other areas that we looked at. But uh, also aim for an application. Aim for an application. How does this passage of Scripture going to benefit me today? What is it that I can take from this and not only benefit me today, but tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that? Now, one of the things that I'd like to emphasize when we're dealing with an application is make it simple. In other words, if you have an issue that the Holy Spirit spoke to you about, a principle in your life, don't make it something that you're going to perfect overnight. Make it a project or an application that is very simple, very practical, something that you can work on, very, maybe simply saying, well, whenever this situation comes up in my life, I'm going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help me. It's not the fact you're going to perfect your life and never do whatever it is that you're not supposed to be doing. So always make your applications practical. Uh, how does it work for me? And, and what is it going to accomplish for me and then the second thing, by way of application, how does it work for others? Hopefully when you're studying the scripture, you're, you're not only being selfish, but you're also being concerned for others that come into contact with you in life. How is it that this passage of scripture is going to be used in my life to help somebody else? One of the things I think is very important 
is that you do a study and you make it, <laughs> if someone else is having an issue in their life, that you make that study available to them. And so if you are writing down your observations and you're doing everything that you can in regard to study of the passage of Scripture, then you're going to be saying, hey, you know, the Holy Spirit just dealt with me with this passage of Scripture. Look at here what, what He taught me in this passage of Scripture. So that's the whole purpose and the principle of studying the Word of God, making the application. Well, we can we can become very very good at uh, at uh, dictating what the word is saying, but uh, are we making the application to what he is saying? And then we need to study systematically. Study systematically. Now I'm not I'm not against, for example, a doctrinal study. Very practical, very useful. But I'm an individual who is prone to be a, a take chapter one of a particular book and proceed through the end of that book study. Uh, the reason why I say I, I'm big on the systematic study of a passage of Scripture is because it causes you to be disciplined. It, by that, I'm saying that you know what you're going to be doing. And you're not praying, Lord, Lord, uh, I'm going to the Bible today and uh, go take and study from this passage of Scripture that you opened me up to today. And if you study, after all, uh, the, if you're looking at a particular book, you're looking at a love letter given by, that, that, by the Holy Spirit through that writer to a particular church or to that particular person. And if it's a love letter... Uh, why would you want to look at the middle when you can start at the top and look down through the bottom? And uh, if you're looking at it in verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, verse 4, instead of going to verse 4, uh, let's go back to verse 5 uh, or whatever, ahead uh, to verse 5, but uh, go back to verse 1 again, then we're not looking at it in the order in which it was written. Not that it's not got practical teaching in the previous verses, but he's building on it as you go further in the passage of Scripture. So study systematically. Depend on the whole Bible. Don't just rest on what's being said. We have enough denominations and cults that have been built around not depending on the whole Scripture. So depend on all uh, all that you find in the Word of God, whether it be the Old Testament or New Testament. In the last session, we emphasized and looked at what, what he said in the book of Acts, chapter 17, in regard to the church of Thessalonica. They said that they searched the Scriptures daily, and they were going back to the Old Testament because they didn't have the New Testament we emphasized last session. So we need to depend on the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. And uh, what we find in the Old Testament is going to concrete what we find in the New Testament. And so don't be afraid to go uh, and do cross-references, so to speak, uh, and see what's going on in, in, throughout the Word of God. One, one, of the, one of the things that I have found as a result of, of doing what we've been looking at today in regard to these principles is it will, it will give you the wherewithal to study and you will not be dependent upon a, a uh, life application Bible or a Rari study Bible or whatever. You'll be getting all this research for yourself and what you dig for yourself, you appreciate far more than what you get from someone else. So let's be diligent when it comes to these study principles because they would be very useful, not only for ourselves, but also sharing with those in whom we come in contact with or the Lord enables us to minister to. Well, keeping faithful in studying the Bible. Oh, will we be found faithful when he calls us home? I trust that this study has been beneficial, has been a blessing or an encouragement to you, and that uh, you'll use these thoughts 
uh, and uh, maybe we'll share them with others as well. Let's look, Lord, in prayer as we close. Uh, Father, again, we've been very diligent to share what you laid on our heart, what you have used to, to bless my life. Father, we pray that you might use it in the lives of, of those who will be viewing this video and those in whom we come in contact with as a result of studying your word. And we'll give you the praise for what you will accomplish because you're so very faithful. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen.